Okay, now we will uh, go to the uh, step further, which is head and neck exam, uh, before we go uh, to the chest. Now, the head and neck exam, again, you don't need a lot of exposure uh, to the patient. You just uh, look at uh, the head and neck, and it can be easily done this way. Okay, we start uh, by uh, inspection. Uh, and uh, after making sure that you have good exposure and good light, then you go looking at the eyes. Uh, and you look at the eyes for different things, but we start by looking at uh, looking at the conjunctiva for pallor. You see the color of the conjunctiva normally is pink, uh, a healthy looking pink. And uh, when the patient has pallor at the eyes, then the conjunctiva, which is this part, this part of the eye, uh, will start to look pale. This is if we have pallor. Uh, and you can use uh, one hand at a time, looking at the eyes, and one eye at a time. Okay, uh, you can see some books doing two eyes at the same time, looking at them uh, and the conjunctiva. Uh, so you can use both ways. Uh, sometimes you may see the opposite. Uh, the healthy looking pink conjunctiva will not be pale, might be actually plethoric, what we call it as plethoric eyes, where you see the color of the conjunctiva is more red and more congested. This is what we call as blethoric face or blethoric eyes, and there are different causes for uh, blethoric uh, uh, like eyes. Uh, you will see them in the box, polycythemia, for example, or superior venous cavity obstruction that can cause such look, uh, looking. Uh, the, you can see the, the, the slides uh, showing the, the such blethoric, blethoric uh, uh, face. And uh, you can see this, the, the list of the causes there in the next slide. This is a bluth, what's called as blethoric face. Uh, again, can be seen by looking at the eyes. So the eyes can show normal looking healthy pink, can be pale in no, people with pallor, and can be blethoric uh, in such causes that you see in the slide chronic core pulmonal, chronic alcoholism, crushing syndrome, carcinoid syndrome, and severe venous cavity uh, uh, obstruction syndrome. Uh, this is uh, as you look into the eyes mainly. And then you examine the upper respiratory tract. Remember that you are examining the respiratory system. And the respiratory system has upper and lower uh, tract. Uh, um, the examination of the upper respiratory tract is very essential part of the examination of the respiratory system, looking at the ears, nose, and throat. However, uh, usually in internal medicine, we don't give you all the details of such exam. Uh, you will have more uh, details on examination of ears, nose, and throat when you have the ENT course. So we will proceed by examining uh, the lymph nodes in the head and neck. Uh, and this slides here, as you see it, showing the types of lymph nodes that you have to look at and examine. So it's important to know your anatomy. Uh, go back to anatomy books, read your anatomy, look at such slide, and you can see how many groups of lymph nodes we have at uh, the head and neck. And you have to uh, look at these lymph nodes, examine them carefully, and see if you have any abnormality. And I will go through examination of the lymph nodes. Uh, we start by inspection. So you come at the front of the patient like this, OK? And look carefully at the, these sites of lymph nodes that we know from our anatomy. And when you look by inspection, you look for any abnormal like uh, color, uh, being more red, for example, over one of the groups, uh, or if you have a scar somewhere over a lymph node, uh, so you look for abnormal color, abnormal scars, uh, any sinus, sometimes 
in patients with advanced lymph nodes uh, like uh, diseases, you may see a discharge in sinus over one of the groups, which indicates that there is lymphadenitis and discharge in sinus. So look for a sinus, abnormal skin color, uh, scars, and you look for any bulge because you may see asymmetry and bulging at one of these group, uh, groups. Uh, and this is, this, the, uh, this is all can be done by inspection only, looking at both sides and carefully also behind the ears, okay? Looking at all the groups that we usually examine. Uh, and then next, after you obtain good uh, like inspection, then you go to palpation. And the uh, uh, palpation, usually we recommend doing palpation of the lymph nodes from the back uh, and uh, use both hands, okay? And start examining the lymph nodes one by one with different groups, okay? So we start with the submental, submandibular, the cervical groups, whether the deep or superficial. And the cervical groups, uh, we are the groups running uh, like across the sternocleidomastoids, whether posterior or anterior to it, uh, deep or superficial. And you can also examine these groups by using both hands, both fingers, uh, more than one or two, uh, more, don't just use one finger like that. We recommend more than two or three fingers, like with the circular movements, circular movements that we use, uh, as described in the next slide, that you will see that we use circular or rotatory motion uh, around the lymph nodes, trying to feel them and see whether you can feel the lymph nodes or not, okay? Uh, always be careful when you are discovering anything, look at the patient face, uh, finding whether it, these sites are tender or not, okay? And if you find any palpable lymph node, then you have to make complete description of it. Uh, the description shown also in the slide here, that you look for the size, the number, the consistency, tenderness or no tenderness, the skin above it, the skin around it. So the complete description of the lymph node and its circumstance and its size and so on, uh, if you find one. If you don't find any, of course, then you'll say no, uh, bulb of uh, lymphadenopathy. And if you find one, then you have to describe the site, the size, the consistency, tender or not tender, the skin above it, uh, the structure around it. Uh, these are very important uh, descriptive points if you discovered lymphadenopathy. Uh, the other groups uh, that I told you, uh, I will just uh, repeat the submental, submandibular, cervical, deep and superficial. Okay, we have also the subraclavicular group that always don't forget to feel. Okay, and we have the very auricular, post auricular groups which are in the grooves here and here, as, as I show, very auricular and post auricular. And don't forget to look at the posterior triangle also in the groove here for any lymph nodes. These are the groups that we usually look carefully for, and you try to find lymph, lymph nodes, bulb bubble lymph nodes or not. So once you finish that, we go next to uh, examination of the jugular venous pressure, uh, the JVB. However, uh, JVB is very important also part of respiratory because patients with corbal monal and uh, chronic lung diseases may have elevated uh, JVB. However, I will leave the examination of the JVB and its details uh, uh, for the cardiac uh, colleagues uh, because uh, usually it is also part of, of cardiovascular exam. And next we go to chest exam. Uh, once we come to chest exam, then we need more exposure at this stage. So you ask your patient to have more exposure. 